morning, class. Welcome to Homeroom with Unc and Market Monk. Morning, P. How's your week? Really good. Just um, better than I expected. I mean, I, you know, I, I thought I'd do pretty well, but a couple of things had a little had a little extra. Uh, entries were good, so um, you know, just stick into the stick into the plan. The Fed stuff materialized just about how I'd expect. Um, you get some intraday bouncing around, but basically it doesn't break trend. Uh, trend has been up, so that's still the better way to better way to trade most of our names. Nice, nice. For me, I started a song like always. Um, that kind of fell apart at, at the perfect time for me um, with the weed names coming up. Even though I was late on that, I missed the news on Friday when it actually came out. Um, didn't catch it till the morning Monday, uh, but had a really good week in the weed names. Uh, uh, Go EV, still a good thing for me. Um, so, so not necessarily less is more, but um, less is, less was more this week for me. Just staying on on the winners, um, keeping keeping the thesis. I guess refreshed daily, um, and and just really sticking to level two and time and sales for me was working. Um, I know we talk outside of this. This is probably the first time we both had a big week together um, since we've been yeah. doing this, <laughs> which I thought was yeah. pretty surprising. Um, but yeah, this, the the work paying off. That that I think you said it six months ago. You know, just the work we do. Make sure you use it and um, really focusing on that. So, good week overall over here. Yeah, for um, for weed, I just I just had Tilray, and pretty much it was just on the thesis we've had, you know, this whole time. Um, kind of, you know, started adding in the one eighties, at just thinking that it's not likely to fully break down, and it's um, better to be in it, especially under two bucks, really under one ninety, I'd say, and then um, it's just kind of autopilot after that. So, uh, really good swing. Swing setup, and I know that one's a meme name, but it's kind of been down here long enough, a little bit like Fubo to, you know, there's there's something there you can repeat. So I think we're we're definitely in that. Yeah, I would, I don't know if you've seen it, but I pulled <laughs> the CGC chart. I mean, I hate talking normal names here, but I used to level that was two and a half years old. Um, for yeah, com yeah. for confirmation, I mean, talk about using your work. Um, it's why I don't bounce my lines around too. I mean, historical support and resistance is different. It just is. It's it. You can trade it a little different. You can count on it a little different. I think we've seen that um, through through the time we've been together. And then when you add flow to it, as confirmation for me, um, it really helps me with direction or staying in plays. Um, you know, not just because I have a problem paper hand in any way. So not just dumping it out, like leaving a little bit of the runners. I'm getting better at that. Um, Readding is something I'm working on in those positions, but um, it, it's a little easier on like those, especially those names to add. You know, a hundred shares, a couple hundred bucks, and then just take that out during the day as well. Um, versus yeah. how much of my position am I going to keep um, overall? So, yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. But um, the, yeah, um, go ahead, go ahead. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. For me, the um, you know staying on winners and finding a way to to get back in them. Um, for some of the stuff that ran really hard, like coin, you know, that's been, that's been really good for me. And, and I've just found that the way I read coin when it was at 120 just happened to work when it was at 220. And it's just kind of gone from, gone from there. Um, you know, AVGO as well. I think the difference with options, so you, you buy a $700 AVGO option and it goes to $2,200 in a span of 15 minutes. Like, you know, it's just kind of quiet most of the day. And then it pops off. You really, you have to sell that. Um, even you can't look back the next day and say, man, that went to $8,000. Because before it went to 8000 it went back to 1200 So like 2200 1200 8000 So if you're going to, if you're going to keep trading it, you got to just get, you get back in, you go smaller, higher strike, you roll it, whatever. And if you're new, when Goose talks about that, or when I talk about that, you know, those are some good questions to ask instead of, is it too late to enter whatever, you know, if you, if you haven't at all yet, because if you ask that question, my inclination is going to be to say yes, 
even if I don't necessarily think that just because your risk is so much is so much higher. So, um, you know, so options are a very different game in that regard. You cannot average down if you're wrong on these big names. You just can't, you can't do it. It's just a horrible method. You were wrong. You get out, you re-enter. So that, that's my little lecture for today on as far as that goes. Yeah. On the, on the share side, a good, a good, I guess, counterpoint to that is Tilray. Tilray is a great example. I mean, I started buying that in, in the one eighties, bought a little yeah. more at 170 in the mid one seventies. And then I was to a point like, I'm not going to add until 150 again. I mean, I like my position, but I mean, we were, we were significantly red, maybe 10% red in that position uh, because yeah. 160 yeah. held. And um, I don't, I don't think you can touch options in that. And then when it, the move does happen, I mean, you have a day or two, to, to get back in on the option side. Not that you should be trading options on dollar stocks. Shares are way better. Um, but it's definitely a different ball game in that regard. They're just they're they're just pro sports, but they're different games. Yeah, and if even if you um, the only way and Tilray is actually too too small, but but let's say it's like a twelve a twelve dollar gold stock or something like that. Um, I I would get a leap on it. I'd get it in the money. And you just, you know, you just kind of go from there. The problem with Hillray and doing that is you probably were down about $40 per contract on that leap that you bought for, let's say 200, if you went in the money. Uh, and um, you got plenty of time. It's, you know, whatever. Uh, but so it pops off like this and, and then you're up 50, $60. Does that, I mean, that doesn't sound too good, does it? Right. You're down 40 and then you're up 60. Yeah. Um, that that's that's rough. I mean, it's it's hard to hold that. Like, you know, it just it feels like a big waste of time. You got mental capital having to look at that thing every day. So um, there just isn't that appeal on um, on the the option side. Very hard. You can look at the weeklies and say, oh, the weeklies went up a thousand percent. Really hard to catch that move on something like Tilray as well. So uh, so I I. As much as I do read the options for these, that's how we figure out what we want to do. Um, it's just not really, it's not worth it to get in options like that. Um, did you? you know, they're they're, be- they're better you, used in bigger stuff. Did you know the Tilray prices? Because you nailed the January leaps, like the price of the January leaps perfectly. <laughs> and they were six. Oh, no. well, they, were, had, they were they were sixty. Bu- they were sixty yeah, yeah. bucks on one twenty nine. They went all the yeah. way down to forty on last week. I mean, you're down fifty percent, and then we're at we we went up to ninety. We're at ninety cents now. So, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a fi- it's a fifty percent winner that went fifty percent down. I mean, yeah, I, I, again, the timing on the options has to happen. Um, that's that's hilarious. If you didn't if you didn't know no, that, I, I didn't. I just just off the cuff. Yeah, well, that's, that's how much I flow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I for for me. Just updating that, at least from the share side, updating the thesis constantly um, really helps in the, I guess, the red position or the position that's that's down a little bit. Um, but I mean, Tilray is kind of a long term, long term play. It's not, it's not like playing Soundhound for me, where Soundhound is like a hundred, what, like a hundred mid one hundreds on the um, forward PE right now. It just, it's just, it's just really outrageous. Or excuse me, on the book value, no forward PE because they're not profitable. <clears throat> it's just a horrible place to be when it's overextended where, where, you know, Tilray is restructuring their business and, and waiting for the feds to act, which that, I mean, that's all we got was a DEA um, saying, Hey, will you guys legalize it? So we don't have to fucking deal with it. So like updating your thesis constantly, I think is most important as from the swing standpoint. And if, if you're not swing trading, you're day trading and you really don't have to worry about that stuff. But I think you have to be more mindful of taking profits if you're day trading and not keeping runners. Because as soon as you keep runners, I think we don't say that enough. You're, you're swing trading. That That's what keeping a runner would be. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, in the, you know, my, the runner has to be running. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know the runner can't. It's been on the options. If it's just consolidating, it's just parked there. Um, you got to just, you got to just get out of it because the value is going to go down just as, you know, as theta decay and all the other Greeks, you know, start to take effect. Um, yeah, Soundhound's a good example that if you if someone asks you, 
and uh, I, we had a question about SoundHound that was a good question, so I'm not referring to that one. But like someone says, like, why is this crashing? That's something traders say a lot on a stock like that. And um, we got on SoundHound, like what, like two bucks? Yeah, under two bucks. Yeah, like, like it was under, and um, ran had that first run seven. We got back in it, the 550 area, you know, popped off, um, and now it's sitting back at, at six. So the person who asked, why is this crashing, probably bought at eight or maybe even nine. And so to them, you know, it, it is crashing. So what do you, is, I don't think crashing is the right word. So how, I, I like to critique words. So what would you, how would you describe what? Soundhound is doing. Well, first, point. first I want to add before I forget it, you, with the runners are running part, um, the the average has to be low, or the shares need to be free. That's um, yeah, that's that's the yeah, the share. Op the options should be free. For, that's for the share sure. side yeah. rule on yeah. runners could be running because uh, I had I had a buddy that I've been walking through that trade and he was trying to accumulate a position and as soon as it got like the seven bucks, he was like, "Do I just dump this all?" And I was like, "Whoa, I thought you were a long term investor here." I mean, you you now have uh, you know like a hundred, two hundred sh free shares. What do you mean? <laughs> like, what do you, yeah. how did it change so fast? So, um, but for crap, no, I guess we're coming back to reality. Would be the better. It, it shouldn't have been six. It shouldn't have been ten bucks. I I said it. I think I said it with this one first. Um, but somebody was just off sides. That's all that mm -hmm. happened here. It's not like the value of the company was up. I think someone was shorting it and they had to get out. And to get out, you need shares and the price, the, the Coke price goes up. That's just what it is. When when you're at the party, yeah. co college party on Friday night and there's only one one bag left, someone's paying, overpaying for it. And that's that's just where it was. So uh, having like a, I think that's where your, your um, like realistic target comes into play we've been seeing that a lot like you really just need to have a realistic target lift right now with 22 if you're not taking profit on lift at 20 i think you're kind of crazy i really do yes um because it, it that doesn't change because of volume uh, market makers they big money whoever are gonna get it back in the box somehow or some way so just having the realistic price sound hounds not a ten dollar stock again they're not profitable nvidia buying them doesn't make them ten dollars um, they're small. If you go look at their revenue, it's like 15, 16 million dollars. It doesn't need a, a billion and a half market cap. It just doesn't. Um, so having the realistic price, I used to say fair market value a lot. What's fair market value yeah. for the stock? Um, I think that will help you a lot because, I mean, was GameStop worth 400 a share? Is AMC worth 20 a share? No. So it was Lucid worth 70 a share? I mean, we could go on and on and on and on, but always having that fair market value um, is important to me. And and sounds yes. probably sounds I, a volume profile helps because I think where big money's at um, is important. That's probably closer to the fair market value. And this almost switched four. It almost switched to four, but that's a hundred percent from our original entry at two, which two probably was the fair market value before Nvidia bottom. So. Do you think it's a 5X company after an NVIDIA bottom? I don't. I don't. Maybe three, four bucks is probably the real true value of it. And that just keeps you grounded, in my opinion. It, yeah, it, it does. And, I, you know, I think um, I'll just too quick. You mentioned Lyft. And so I had Lyft, uh, you know, 35C in Lyft, right? And so when I, when I post those, someone who's new will usually ask me, well, you know, should I buy it? Like, basically, like, is that something to buy uh my answer is always no and uh and that 35c wasn't you know just an anomaly i mean there's there was a lot at 20 and this is back when it was like 12 bucks a lot 20 22 you know etc um but it's got to go up to that level and then it's got to prove itself from there and then yes it can it can go higher but you've entered a new trade at that point it's a little like coin uh, I don't have all my original coin because of how coin is, you know, because of the way it can it can pull back. Roku is the same way. You know, at 58, I saw Roku 90C. I saw 100C. It did get there. But look at what happened, at, you know, a after that. So you do have to take the money and then and then it resets and you go. And we've been talking about Roku for several weeks now because 
you know, of where it is and the flow setting back up and, um, and, you know, and, and all that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you don't, I mean, there's a lot of these trades. Uh, Lyft already went quote to the moon. Sure. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it did. And so it's like, I mean, you want it to go to Mars now, or, or I mean, what are you, you can't, you can't just like hold that whole time without taking some money off the table. Um, recipe for disaster and it's what people did in the whole meme craze they either held all the way up and all the way down or they entered late and got bagged and those are two scenarios not a part of what we do and um you know something to unlearn if that's part of your your strategy i've been cooking a lot so i'm gonna say it's like making a lot it's like making good gravy and you don't want it to get clumpy and what I mean by that is when you're mixing butter and flour, you got to be, you got to know what you're doing. Um, day trading and investing are completely different. Um, you're day trading off of speculation. Um, yeah. You're, you're, you're getting news or you're getting, you know, some, something that's making people think this is going to be worth more in the long run. And you're taking advantage of that. Well, when the dust settles, we're going to go back to the more of the fundamentals, the flower of it. And that that's going to control the price probably more than the speculation. The speculation is going to be short term. And then when the dust settles, you, you have to go back to, I mean, what's this company really worth at this point in time? Um, because, again, when that speculation comes in, you're trading like the five-year hope. Um when we get back to normal volume and they're in control, we're back to what's this company really worth? Where should I be buying it at? Because a lot of people miss that boat. Um, the, the car analogy I already use, are you buying that car at 100K? No. So why would people that have big money or investors buy it there? They're going to, you know, they're going to wait for it to come back to reality if they do like the, the fundamentals of it. And that, I think that's what you see a lot. And mixing those two is dangerous for a day trader in my opinion, because an investor has time still, he'll just wait. And I say I have time all the time. So I'm, I think I'm not, I think I'm one of the better ones at that is knowing I'll just buy it when it's cheap again. Um, and as a yeah. day trader, if you get caught up and, oh, I'm going to miss something, you probably already did miss it. Um, you should stay on the winners. That's why we're still on. Like Roku's a good example. That's why we're still there. Um, but in, until, it's it's not a ninety dollar company. Let's just say that it's not. But it's a great buy at, at what sixty two, sixty three. So I mean, you can't mix um, the two pools. Uh, yeah, and if they uh, if they do get acquired, they probably will get acquired at maybe eighty eight a share or ninety or something like that. So um, there, that's you know that narrative is is out there, and then it does run to those levels. But the the reaction that it gets when it's up there um, tells you a lot about the company and so um so yeah that's why that one's definitely more of a more of a trade um you know some of these chip names semiconductors and like there were investment spots for that there was an investment spot for facebook for netflix like we've been you know we've been on that stuff and um you could probably still invest in some of those uh but you just got to be ready you know, don't think that your your average right now on Facebook or Netflix is going to be is going to be it. Um, you know, we we can pull back a lot more, but uh, but they still, I mean, they're still in terms of just being sound growth companies going to move up with the S and P five hundred. I think a lot of them have kind of proven themselves you're, uh, you're, by you're, now. And, your better example is Carvana. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it was great at eight. Maybe yep. even great at fifteen, but who the hell is buying it up here to hold on to that? I mean, if you're trading it, it needs to be day trades at this point in time, um, because the yeah, it's not a legacy company like the two you're talking about. Oh yeah, I mean, when you talk about the the secondary move. I at you know fifty five, uh, like fifty to fifty five. I was getting a lot. I was reading flow on it, and I'm getting questions about their business model, and I'm like, I, I'm not defending their business model. I you know they're kind of I, I sold the car for them. They overpaid for it by about twenty five hundred dollars, you know. I and I did that instead of trading it in for that reason. So that doesn't seem great for a business. But you know, the point was like like the flow setup was there, just like it was, you know, back when it was eight bucks. So um, so yeah, great great trade. I'm I'm all out of Carvana. Uh, Eighty dollars, that was enough for me. Can go to a hundred, sure. Um, 
the options are not really that playable up here. And uh, the, the share side not, doesn't have that much appeal either. So, uh, Zero. so I'm on the sidelines for Carvana. But you got, you know, you got to be willing to move on. And I'm happy moving on from that one. Yeah, yeah. Just the, that. I, I guess when you go 100, percent you should start looking at the fundamentals of the company to have a realistic mindset. Um, or, yeah. or there are 15 minute trades, as you like to say. I mean, you can stay on your winner in that regard, but it's not the same setup. Um, and, and that's what makes a trader a trader. I mean, just having those kind of that discipline, in my opinion, um, keeps you out of trouble. Um, the very few of them are like your AVGOs, your coins currently. What's the other? MST, yeah. MSTR. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I think you do a great job with those updating the thesis and keeping the position small. Uh, where a lot of people continue just to do the same thing they did on the first, the first at bat, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, so la last comment on that, and we'll we'll move on to some talk of metals and, and crypto and some things. But right. so AVGO, like I was, like I said, I wanted under twelve twenty, twelve twenty, twelve twenty. Those numbers didn't come from nowhere. Um, PA is tricky up here. It's all option driven, just because the move was so explosive. I mean, I, you could probably do TA. It's just not, it's not TA I can do. And I, I just check with you. You'll tell me, you know, all time high chart. You know, we go through it from there. Point was like, I got the entry. 1204 was the bottom. So you either buy there or you wait for your 1220 area, you know, whatever. Um, explosive move, 1300 was the target. Hit 1400. Um, and then, you know, we kind of, kind of go from there. But yeah, small, uh, there's two contracts. They're seven hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, they're expensive, right? And and my my saying is, you know, it's well, it's more expensive now, but you can't, to me, add it up near fourteen hundred, even if you see fifteen hundred is possible, unless, like I, I use the phrase, close to the vet. This is a scalp trade, and you got to be right. If you're right, you're right fast. If you're wrong. You cut it and move on. Yeah. If you lose a hundred dollars, that's fine. Um, but don't don't think don't think you have time. Even if your contract is in May, don't make the mistake of thinking you have time. Because call up that option calculator chart. You don't have time. You get on the wrong end of that. It's very hard to climb out of it. So um, they uh, they don't care when you bought, um, and it can just park in one percent days for. A week and then you're done so uh so be really careful about that for, side. for for me just a quick point before we go to crypto and whatnot um uh, when you're when you're up here i've been and i've been saying it a lot more the only thing you got is is weekly wicks that's about it and it sounds the same way right now you just got the weekly wicks you need to really zoom out i mean that's your if if that level doesn't hold then what you said is proper you you got to be wrong quick you just do yeah um yeah. So, uh, crypto, what do you, 65 still holding on strong up here. I thought we'd get a little bit, well, we did, we did get the 60, 63, 64 area last week, but, um, that, yeah. that's the higher low we were looking for. Definitely showing some strength up here. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. The, um, the, you know, I, I, fo I follow kind of the overall picture with whales, if they're buyers or sellers, um, and what happens is on the pullbacks, they go aggressively sell side over 60%. Um, and then the switch back is very fast. And it's been any dip under 65K, you know, just rips right back up. So um, I think that there is some nice potential to make a run into the having or housing, whatever, <laughs> you know, the, um, that big date, April 20th. Okay. So it, it is, it is 420 is the day there's going to be a whole lot of memification going on with that, that whole thing. Um, it's not necessarily a good thing for crypto miners. It's what horrible. comes out of this it's horrible. Um, yeah. So the, there's going to be winners and losers there. Um, and I, you know, I still think crypto services are, better stock to hold. Um, if you're in free shares from CLSK back when we were talking about it or Mara or whatever, um, I think you're still good. You're still good there. Just um, 
the run up kind of like the ETF thing. The run up's going to be pretty good in most of these names, and then um, I, I think expect a pretty significant pullback in some of the smalls after that. And then um, coin, if coin makes an aggressive pullback, um, it's going to be to something like two twenty or one eighty. Um, we're not going back to sixty bucks on coin. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, we'll. Um, I'd be careful holding through that. A lot of volatility, a lot of opportunities, but um, some of the miners are probably not going to make it, I would say, even even yeah. with crypto prices up it's, here. It's a good example uh, just to apply what I just flipping said. Like the speculation we're moving on um, currently, like those charts are all forward, forward thinking and hopeful right now that Bitcoin's going to the moon. Uh, when it does crash, you're going to come back to, holy shit, what's the market cap? For this company and i posted what yeah. they own in bitcoin and what they're worth probably two weeks ago and i find the post and bump it for everybody but until that i mean that's what i'm looking for out of the half and i'll just go on my plan and thesis i'm looking for those to get undervalued just in what they hold on the coins currently um if if not the trade's not really there for me um outside of day trading it off of levels um with bitcoin currently running but as soon, I mean, we're, we're kind of in a two separate thesis. I mean, right now we're playing the run up, but as soon as we get closer to that date, it's going to go real quick back to fundamental value. Um, and you should know what the company's worth that you're trading because a lot of those are pretty checked out. Yeah. Um, so at MSDR, good example. Um, you know, I think a, a crash for MSDR, if we want to use that term, that stock can drop 50%. It drops 50%. It's still way the hell ahead of my <laughs> way the hell above my entries on it yeah. that I talked about. So um, it's kind of like a new paradigm, and you know their their average cost is I think thirty two thousand per Bitcoin, right? So um, we're way checked out from there. The fundamentals of their software company don't matter as much. Um, uh, the their pivot with their software to Bitcoin related stuff kind of locks them in as you know, they're they're a Bitcoin stock, so you know they're going to be a little um, a little bit different. But uh, yeah, coin um, you know coin fundamentals continue to get better. They're they're the big custodian for all those ETFs. So um, I like them long term. I like Hood Hood still way undervalued to me for what they could be. And then you've got Square. So um, so I would expect on the other side of all this, we're going to be in a lot of names like that, and then. Day trades will still be there on the on the small. Yeah, you said um, MSTR could half. I totally think it, that's probably where it should be. I mean, it's fifty six yeah, forward yeah. PE right now. It's an eight hundred dollar stock. It's not a fifteen hundred dollar stock. It just really no, is. yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but again, that 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 initial speculation um, and the current run that's that's where that's where I'm, and I'm sure some people are short as well. Um, I think they were trying to buy some back also. So just a, a lot of mix there. And then coin, you know, your, your nine book value here, you're, you're way, you're way closer to the earth on coin. Um, and, and again, they don't just get paid off of, um, what do you want to call it? They don't just get paid for holding crypto. They're getting paid for the service side. So as long as people are using crypto, that's where their money comes in. Totally different ball game in my opinion. Yeah. Then, then, yeah. then a hive, a hut, a Mara, a riot that are just, trying to produce coins for money basically yeah and it gets it gets harder and more expensive the longer bitcoin goes that's how it's built so um so my, yeah miners have a shelf life in general and so unless you know ethereum kind of takes over that side of it or some of those other coins um it's going to be diff difficult as a miner to um to sustain yourself and so the bigger ones will gobble up the smaller ones and Someone will die. When, um, when, when those miners ran from pennies, like literally, they were all pennies. They weren't a dollar. Yeah. When they, they ran from pennies, it was because of, of Bitcoin going from like 17K to 60K. The halving wasn't in anyone's mind when that happened um, at all. So, like, now that's yeah. on the table. That's a totally different thing. I mean, you're basically cutting out the what they could produce. By half, I believe. I'm not sure how the math works on that, but I know it's not. I know them bites that they take from these halflings aren't nice. Um, yeah. For the miner side, I want to definitely get into ER here. Um, yeah. Because you said that, 
So I'm interested in what you were what you were going to say there. I definitely want to spend some time on that. Yeah. So um, uh, Lulu and Nike, um, you know, made a pretty big uh, statement as far as you know the the guidance being down and and so that you know they said some pretty important things about consumers and you know their consumer base being a little tighter with with money and kind of you know expectations being down. So um, so I, I kind of expect some continued um downside there uh software has not reacted well to um to guidance it just you know it continues we saw with micron um the optimism is in is in hardware and then your occasional um retail store just depending on you know what they say discount stores still struggling a lot five uh, coming off the dollar general coming to going down again so um so you know a lot of those narratives they're they're playing out kind of how I expected um, earnings. I've been on the upside for hardware and I've been playing the downside for software and and some of these stores had Lulu 400p for April that went in the money. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean that's uh, it's all it's still it's just all about guidance right now. Everybody's beating their numbers because the numbers the oh, expectations well, are yeah. soft. So yeah, yeah. you know it's a uh, you set a low bar and you, you beat it. Um, but the market's just shrug shrugging that part of it off. And it's just all about, um, it's all about the guidance right now. So, uh, don't really see that changing in you two. I think we, we see more of that. Yeah. I mean, I haven't updated the thesis in a while overall market, but I'm to the point where I'm comfortable saying like the, the things that you have to have in life, they're going to do just fine from, from an ER number standpoint, not necessarily a share standpoint, but just in general, like if you have to have certain thing that, that's why oil's pretty big for us right now oil natural gas you just have to have that yeah. um the things that people that they just need those are going to continue to do well um and that that crossed with you know i don't i don't know how else to say it but like rich people or your your tech your tech workers or the people that do are above middle class like they're comfortable with putting their money back in this market and they, that that's what they that's what they've just been trained to do. So that's kind of holding the market up, in my opinion, right now. Um, but those, those, you need to have those two mindsets. Like long-term investors are buying stable stocks. And I think we're going to see that rotation um, going forward, um, just in general. And the, a lot of the speculative stuff is just not going to last um, or can be ruined when they come out and say, we need to borrow money or aren't profitable. Um the names that come to my mind that are kind of like on the fence are like Big Lots, um, Red Robin. I mean, they've got a lot of debt. They have a ton of debt, yeah. and it's hard for them to operate in this environment when they're used to borrowing money at like one percent, and now they got to pay five to six. I mean, that's literally their profit margin. So th those companies are literally trying to stay afloat currently, just like to make it until we get back to a stable environment. Maybe cut some assets. Funko, you see, Funko did a really good job at that. Um, but, I mean, that's just where we are. So those those boring names probably are better from a long-term standpoint. But you're just playing the news for the most part in any of the other stuff on a shorter-term basis. Um, because we haven't, that, that, that rate keeps getting pushed back and down. Somehow we're in a good economy right now. Uh, but I think it's only good for the people that are above middle class. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to yeah, totally with you there. I, you know, so um, I, you know, I could see the earnings, the trades through earnings um, continue to have a good win rate there, but you have to understand that you're, um, you know, you're looking at, you're just wanting to get, you know, at least like 60, per you win on 60% of them and then you're winning half the trade and then you just got to buy the right options for, you know, for, for it to work. But, um, I mean, I've had several, like, Lulu uh, spent 600 bucks total and sold the option for $2,300 for the, the put. Calls worthless. Uh, but, that you know, that's that's the kind of trade you're in. But you cannot size those up. I don't, I just, you can't, you win a few and then size them up. You just cannot, uh, cannot do that. But but you are getting some pretty dramatic moves on, um, on earnings. And then what we look for, really, what I'm after um, I want to buy Lulu again. And so we, we kind of look for that to, 
um, to set back up. So, uh, so my last point of the guidance, even when the guidance is bad, um, the market gets some amnesia, amnesia about that. And you do see a lot of these stocks recover at least to that mid candle spot. So, um, we're going to get a lot of good setups like, like that, in my opinion, in the coming months. Yeah, you're just playing volatility in that regard. And again, that's yes. what updating yeah. your thesis constantly. You need to know why you're trading, what you're trading, and update it regularly. That's a volatility trade. Um, I, I, for me, just get on base. What, what are you doing? You, yeah. It's, yeah. It's not Absolutely. a hold and hope. Um, the, the, what really got me to my thesis, and then we'll move on to some boring stuff, is John Deere and Cat. Um, when we called those mm -hmm. back there, I mean, you just have to have them. Like the, the, you have, people have to have, they have to buy a new tractor, have to buy new tractor parts, you know, if we're going to have any kind of economy. And, and I think we're, we're going to see that going forward with like the Clorox, the Pepsi, the Budweiser, you know, just the yeah, stuff that, yeah. just the stuff that you, you need, maybe even medical, if you want a whole sector. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. John Deere, um, they've been pessimistic in their earnings reports, um, at least like the last four of them. So, uh, you know, I just, I just buy up the drops there. And this last one was perfect. Um, yeah. I was like under 360, you know, and here we are 400, um, could easily go to 420, but you know, if you bought it 360, you don't care if it goes to 420, that'd be great, but you've already, you know, you're already way up on it. So yeah, you don't, um, you, you need those things. You don't need stretchy pants and Jordans just is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some boring stuff. Let's spend five on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so last week, I, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a victory lap on aluminum. I said that um, aluminum, my, my pivot on it, 203.05. I said, you know, we're going to continue to kind of dance around that, but I think it's going to hold. And I said, we got an explosive move coming, probably 210, 212, 214. Uh, well, 208. Um, and... So that is uh, kind of doing what I expected. Um, names like AA can go 60, 80% share side, um, and especially from our entries that we talked about. So there's still a lot of, a lot of meat on the bone there. Um, copper pulled back a little bit, still over four bucks, looking for my line at $4 to, um, to hold. So, you know, everything still looks pretty good there. And uh, we'll just follow the flow on the individual names. Oil, um, oil's 80 bucks. I think you and I both are looking at a run maybe to, you know, 88 to 92 is sort of where I'm, yeah. where I'm at. Um, hundred dollar oil would require some kind of geopolitical thing to me. It's not um, off the table. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I just think just kind of the, the, the progression uptrend whatever um is going to take it to 88 and uh that's going to carry um carry a lot of our names so we had a whole segment on energy i encourage people to watch that i'm going to talk about which names have checked out a bit which uh can make up a lot of room so um so i, I would stay on those and then uh you know natural gas continues to flounder uh in terms of the price 165 uh you don't want to get into the 150s on that, but um, I'm still avoiding the ETFs and just going with the combo, the combo names because they're they're holding up well. Um, Comstock's been going up regardless of what's happening with natural gas prices, just because of well, really what Jerry Jones is doing. But um, but yeah, there's a couple names like that. So um, so I would kind of stay on those. And then if you do get a move to two dollars, two fifty in natural gas, um, the gains in those those combo stocks. Are going to be 20 30 40 percent so um i'm not a hype person that's just what's going to happen if the underlying commodity makes the move which uh it certainly could um real, just real quick on that i i when we got together oil had already made a run wasn't really what i traded before uh, my best advice to anybody when you know we're talking aluminum natural gas oil you, you have two choices you either try to trade the blue chip of everyone, or you just stick to one sector and learn that sector. It took me probably eight, nine months to really get a, a feel and a hang on how oil stocks work, um, because they are tangible. They are tied to a commodity um, that that helps them out. Like again, Lulu's not trading off of spandex prices. It's not. So they're just a different ball game. 
um, on those share sides. But I would stick, again, either stick to one, one sector, just trade oil, just trade natural, natural gas, just trade aluminum, or stick with just the blue chip, the winners, the number one play in each one of the sectors, because I think that's where you're better off. Um, it's real hard to, to just say they're, um, I don't know what you want to call them, but it's real hard to say like that's that's a sector in itself. It's yeah. not. It's not. They each kind of move their own way, um, in my opinion. So and and I've that that's what I've learned since I've been hanging out with you is like, you know, you can't think oil moves like aluminum. You can't think natural gas moves like oil because they're completely different sectors. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, yeah, totally with you on that. And and I just think. Um, I do not mess under any circumstances with um, short expiration options on most of these. There's just not much, there's not much appeal there. Uh, if you, because like, okay, so even with something like AA, if you got it under 28 and you had some monthly options, uh, yes, they, you know, they took off and you did exceptionally well. Uh, but if you bought Leap, they're almost the same price when you look it up, they're not that much more expensive. Um, and you can just go ahead and stay in it now uh, and, you know, keep a couple free ones and not, not have to mess with, you know, rolling them or, um, or whatever. And then, you know, share side is really what you want. Um, Cause you got, if you bought, if you bought AA 2680 or 27, you know, whatever, this potential move to $50, you can actually catch that. It's a lot harder to do that in, uh, in options. So that's just my, my whole spiel there. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Well, let's get in the spy before we get out of here. Um, yep. Blew the flipping doors off. I was good till Thursday or Wednesday. We were hitting my 516. I felt like a champ. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, then Jay Powell um, didn't throw cold water on it like I thought. Um, I don't, again, I, I, I said it last few weeks. I, nothing stopping this market continues to prove that. Um, completely checked out on my end so i'm more interested in what you got to say over there because i'm sure there was a lot of movement in the option side um yeah so i uh we both said yes on the over number so um mm -hmm. yeah that was good and uh, it would have been uh embarrassing to say no and then <laughs> given what that did so uh so we're good there um yeah so option side we're seeing um you know, I, I had, my big thesis last time was that our our, our disaster floor moved up to me, um, basically to like four eight the four eighty yeah, right area. Um, I've kind of given up on four fifty and four thirty. Um, they're still heavily selling those, so like May four fifty, um, they sold one hundred and fifty thousand contracts uh, on Friday for sixty bucks each. To, I guess retail speculators looking for a crash um, don't really expect those contracts to do anything except just they'll pocket the premium on that uh, so then you, know, you get to kind of my like realistic downside um, there's a lot of cross trades happening in this 520 area where we just got to on, on the put um, so that doesn't really give you like a downside target or anything, but, um, you know, those, those as kind of an in the money put market control, that's kind of what that, um, what that's about. And, uh, same thing's happening with, uh, in the money puts at 540. So there's kind of a strategy shift here where instead of doing a, uh, out of the money put as like a downside target, they're getting in the money puts to try to slow the upside. So that, that's, that's kind of what I'm seeing that, uh, I think we might go sideways a little bit, bleed out a little bit down, uh, kill some, kill some premium. So I, so I expect some quiet days, some, you know, quarter of a percent type days, you know, with some intraday range. Um, so that's, that's kind of my, my read right now. I don't have a lot of downside numbers I can say, except that, that 480 area is still where I would look if we get any kind of big pullback that's sustained over a couple weeks. I got some numbers just because we're so checked out. It's easy for me just to grab 
numbers. Um, All-time high charts aren't my favorite. But a 515.89, I got an auto RTL on a, the one hour. I'm just going to go with that for downside. Um, kind of, to be honest, I'm just splitting splitting hairs here. And then the top side, I think the psychological of 525 um, will hold. So I'm going to go 524.99 on the top. Um, I, I'm, I'm with you. Sideways, sideways is healthy at this point in time. Yeah, yeah. I uh, So my, my numbers, um, this is me just looking at couple of the option buys just for this this week um i'm gonna go 513.79 getting the body of a couple daily candles and getting into those wicks and we'll see what happens there um and then upside um this used to be so much easier to me uh-huh. um, 524.02 okay, so we're real close so the, the million dollar question, do we finish above the week above 520? Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say we finished the week at like 519.50 or something. Like close, but no, I'll say no. Okay. I'm going to go yes, just to be different since it's better if one of us are right. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. I, I, again, I'm going to, I'm going to stick to what I've said, probably five of the six sessions. The, the, what's going to stop this market. It's just showing strength. Um, yeah. Um, and hopefully there's some enough activity that the whales want to keep it above 520, um, like they did Friday here. And, you know, something that, um, is always looming out there that, when Apple is performing poorly, um, you know, it, it, well, for one thing, it's dangerous to short it after it drops three, four percent. I mean, I just don't think that's somewhere you want to be. Um, but then what, what can happen is if Apple recovers, they recover half this candle or more, or, you know, get to 175, 178. Um, that's going to just give Spy that extra push. Uh, you know, right now you can say it's all about Nvidia if you want, that's whatever. But um, but Apple doesn't have to go to the moon to give the market a big boost, or to even keep it flat if some other stuff is um, is falling. So we would like to have a runway, and you get a stock as big as Apple that has a little bit of a runway that um, that can can change things. And then I think can, for me, the last thing I'll say about Spy, Tesla's continued irrelevance for Spy. It's something that I've been talking about for like a year and a half that it's not moving with spy. It doesn't move spy, doesn't care about like it's just it's just a little bit detached from it still matters. But there was a time in Tesla's heyday uh, where it and spy moved together and it basically was doing what NVIDIA is doing now. So um, though I wouldn't look for those correlations anymore. I think they're. You know, Spy has plenty of good days when Tesla's down, or vice versa. So, be careful with that. So we got we got Nvidia and Apple fighting, and uh, Spy's the referee currently. Yeah, I'd there, say so. There yeah. we go. Like and subscribe for more people. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to work, B. Yep.